was uh, kind of an unusual time, but here we are. And uh, Life in the pandemic. It doesn't stop us. Uh, got Therapy goes on Does. and on. And we're like the mailman. We're delivering the mail. Look, uh, <clears throat> Come we, on. We, we've been inducing social distancing for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. I think we've, I think we've <laughs> repelled so many people. Maybe that's, that's what it is. I don't think you have. We've distanced them. Mm. Uh, that's maybe what more like it. Well, how are you doing, my friend? I mean, this is an well, unusual time, so. I'm starting to regret this COVID tattoo. Oh. I, you know, it's, you should think about these things before uh, yeah, you. Yeah, you should, because uh, that may be temporary. Uh, <laughs> put that, the COVID tattoo. There is no way you have a COVID tattoo. Also, I'm, I'm also regretting the do not resuscitate tattoo I have, too. <laughs> I've been rethinking that ever since I got it. Yeah, the <laughs> tattoo removal shops are doing going to have a fun, a fun filled time Actually, with it, you for sure. Because it, it works like this. Ever since I got that tattoo, like I, I, I'm afraid to fall asleep around my wife because if I stop breathing just for a moment, I get the sense she's going to find some way to pull the plug. You yeah, know what I'm <laughs> that's right. Even though you're not hooked up, I don't know. <laughs> I think. Uh, uh, well, let's. Uh, she thinks well, let's, it's like you know, it's that's a good way to collect some insurance. Yeah, money. you put that's put that mirror up on your in front of your nose there and. Uh, and she sees no, I no sign. And uh, before I have to put the pillow, I think she's really thinking <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, hard yeah. to sleep on the bed without any pillows because you fear <laughs> that she might use it for you. Uh, might, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's how that's going to work. Well, it's a strange time, and I don't know if, if people really know how to uh, respond to this. I don't think I do. Um, uh, but uh, it's also a confusing time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what we get is uh, inundated with uh, information that's usually on the darker side and we how do. terrible things are. And that's going to panic a lot of and people. And that was I before people, the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> that's absolutely true. Um, yeah, we're, we're kind of used to bad news in a way. We should be some, have yeah. some immunity to it. But, but this is bad. And not only is it um, – you know, on the, on the local side, and we talk about a lot of things going on around here, but this is in uh, national and global. I mean, it's yeah. everywhere. You can't escape it, right? And so, and not knowing what to do. What do you do? People are hoarding toilet paper. Uh, mm-hmm. Lots of things are kind of happening. You know, they caught a couple of guys up in the, oh, in your neck of the woods, there was a guy in Tennessee who uh, did the hand sanitizer uh, hoarding and went out and bought all of the hand sanitizer, filled his garage was going to sell it at a much higher price and guess what amazon and ebay shut him down really they just you can't uh, you can't you can't overcharge for things like that there's laws evidently see i I except for senators uh by the way who seem to be able to get information prior to and bail on all their stock and make i I saw a a, commentary a a kardashian like in a bathtub full of hand sanitizer you know just so the rich have like (laughs) bathing in it it's just like you know yeah just sort of it it may be the case but people are sort of uh, they're responding to this in a in a strange way i mean what's the what's the norm these days and what should we do and i hope we have a chance to talk about this uh, today because I think people really need to uh, to understand what what is a good response and how should they sort of build some resilience and uh, and work through this. Well, I was thinking about uh, in times like these, it's always good to uh, to uh, think about uh, my old friend Wilfred Beon. Okay, Beon, we talked about him, and uh, you know, Beon, uh, he described his uh, experience in war that the problem with war is it doesn't want you to think. That right. um, you know that that, that it is all s- subthalmic, blind, reflexive action. That's that's wow. what's asked of us in those moments. Okay. And so what I would think. So, just as Beyond said, well, how do we develop a mind that can think things like war? And if we could, we might be able to avoid them. Right. And I, so I th- I think a little bit about um, how do we develop a, a mind f- for a pandemic. And right. so, how okay. do we how do we think and feel and feel and think in the midst of something that most of us I think 1918 was the last pandemic. Right. right. So right, right, right. Yeah. we haven't. The majority of us have never had to face this before. So how do we think it? How do we how do we exist in a time like this? And um, maybe that's something we can sort of talk about, like with okay. some inclination that there is a propensity to be. To be afraid, there is a uh, a, a tendency to um, to uh, either run 
fear can get us to run. We can run in two different directions. We can hide in uh, and um, um, uh, when I think about the potential responses to fear, I, I think a little bit about the number of folks right now are probably binge watching things on Netflix. Right. 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 Nothing wrong with that. You yep. be, and there are other folks who are, like you said, fear uh, pulls them in the direction of of um, uh, at the grocery store, f- clawing over toilet paper. Again, those right, are those right. are two different directions. Maybe neither of those are necessarily thinking and being in a time of pandemic. And maybe that's something we can talk a bit about. Like, yeah, I think I I, I don't know. It, uh, there's not this preparation for these kinds of things. And if you're saying Beyond said in the war that we don't want to think, we you know that's probably pushing us in that way, but yet this is not something that is temporary. It's uh, in in some in a certain way, we'll have to explain that maybe, but the idea that this is going to go on for weeks, if not more, months maybe even to to a certain extent. So, we're not really prepared. Maybe we were prepared for that one quick hit. And then, then we recover. This is going to be ongoing, so we have to do some preparation. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it, and maybe the thing when we talk about preparation, because um, you know, there's always a before, a during, and an after. Okay. And we, we're now in the during. So. Um, yeah. uh, and the, 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 there will be an after. These these things come and they go, like you said. Even if it's months, there is an end. So we may want to think about what do we do during the during. And right. um, you know, th- there've been uh, we- we've put this on our uh, website at uh, at the counseling center at CSU, and I've heard this spoken over again. There's some some tips to think about. Okay. And um, we may have touched on those a little bit last time too when we were talking about the pandemic. But um, uh, you mentioned something about um, uh, there is a constant cycle of news and potential um, scary, horrible things that we're often sort of inundated with. And our capacity to be able to step away from that and take a break, I think, is very important. Um, our capacity to maintain and cultivate connection, even in a time of social distancing. You know, we, we have phones. We have all sorts of ways. Right. Uh, if we're trapped with our family, we have a, be, we have a way of being able to sort of cultivate uh, maybe some of the relationships that uh, the busyness of, uh, of the time before has kept us from cultivating. That's really important. I think there's also this notion of self-care. Um, you know, uh, I was sort of joking a minute ago, but my gym mm-hmm. is now closed. And right. one of the ways that I often, you know, manage and handle my stress is, you know, and it, it makes sense the gym would be closed. I, it, it, uh, it is kind of a giant Petri dish of sweaty yes. people. Yes. Uh, and, uh, t- uh, touching things, handing it, it off is. to other people. It's not, uh, uh, you yeah. can have the sanitary wipes, but then, uh, It would wipe. make sense. Yeah. But, um, and also like, uh, I think... Folks like me, we would have a tendency when we're stressed or whatnot to go to the gym. And so up until my gym was closed, I noticed that it had a lot of people in it. I'm like, why is this gym have more people? And then, ah, Uh these are the people that would handle their stress by going to the gym. Right, right. (laughs) But now we don't. And so I mean, that's been advice for a long time, too, you know, uh, work out, get activity, do something to get the tension out. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, uh, um, you know, um, hunt your fellow man. You could also get some. Uh, I don't know. Right. It is the most yeah. dangerous game. That well, now be- I know. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's. I've seen that movie. I yeah, think there but, is a movie. But that- the but the idea is that it might bring out a different reactions. It might bring out some pretty bad reactions. Some some folks who uh, just don't know how to handle this and they're going to do all the wrong things. Well, it, it takes us back to that concept of self-care. So for me, if, if self-care was exercise, well, we're lucky at this point because today is a beautiful day. We're yep. in the midst of spring. It hasn't gotten too hot. There is a good deal of pollen out there, and my yep. lungs are telling me yes, that, you know, there, there's a, a, pollen, lot of, yes. a lot of, you know, but... Um, I noticed all the squirrels were yellow. I'm like, what happened? Oh, what covered happened? In pollen. No, I've never <laughs> seen yellow squirrels before. They're all uh, uh, so. Uh, but the whole wisteria is out. I I mm-hmm. was commenting to uh, my wife about that on the drive down, uh, and uh, dogwood trees are coming out, jasmine being blooming. All of this is great. Yeah, there's all these sorts of things, right? There's there there, there are things out there. Nature's doing fine. And, Humans, and you, not so much. You had mentioned you'd been doing some biking. See, so there yeah. there are ways to exercise. There are ways to self care. There are nope. ways to be right. And so we, we 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 talk about that. You've been uh, you know bike riding. I think. Uh, um, I do believe you'd stolen some toilet paper, and it was <laughs> you were being pursued by uh, 
but um i don't remember that scenario but uh yeah so yeah so you have to hunt for search and and maybe be creative in some ways to find those de-stressors that uh may substitute for some things i think think part of uh we may have talked about this last time too that part of what makes this really um unusual in a way is oftentimes we are to some degree isolated in our stress we have our own unique and specific stressors but this is a systemic stress. It is a. Uh, it hits uh, families, communities, our cities. Our it's global, and so we're sort of all in the middle of it, and, and that offers a, a unique sort of way. Um, uh, I don't want to try to polish this too much, but since right. we're all in this together, it gives us a chance to be able to try to think this together too. Mm-hmm. But it also becomes almost like if you're not careful, a background. You are. You just accept and are, and are not completely aware of um, – when Beyond talks about war, when you're plopped in the middle of it, your um, perspective is gone and mm-hmm. you're sort of lost in this um, – um, amorphous web of stress and strain, and we, if we're not careful, we could do that. We could become embedded in such a way that don't allow us to sort of think. It. Uh, I've used this analogy before: the frog in boiling water. Like you put the frog in water and you slowly turn it up, the frog won't leave the water; it'll boil to death. Well, right now we are all in the same water. Yes. So the catch is, what do we do? My, my gym is closed. I'm I'm thinking about taking up whittling. Okay. I don't know. If Good. I, I don't know about a um, sharp object like that around you, but uh, maybe it would, <laughs> we might need to be a little careful. I don't know. Maybe. But, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I'll, well, this is a time for uh, – in a way, I think it's uh, it's a challenge, is it? isn't it? I mean, maybe we have to be creative and find some different ways to not only react and social distance from people – um, what we do with family members and so forth, but what we do as individuals out there. So uh, maybe we have to be a little more creative, and it's time to take up that uh, hobby that you've put off for a while. <laughs> well, and you know, one of my hobbies is overthinking, and uh, um, I've often. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> and uh, you know, I've often. Uh, I, I think have you. Well, wait. Today, today is Zizek's birthday. I think. Oh, as a matter of fact. Hey. So, okay. Uh, happy birthday, Zizek. Happy birthday. Mr. Zizak. Okay, there's we're the, uh, good. Um, th- there's this notion from Zizak, right, that don't act, think. And so what that means is that there's the – if you can insert some sort of thought in between the feeling and the action, there's a possibility for some sort of growth. And that's a little bit what Bion right. talks about with building a mind. How do you build a mind that allow us to experience the impact of all our current stress, the news cycle, all these sorts of things? And then the blind act might be, you know um, – uh, hoarding uh, toilet paper um, in your uh, gun closet, whatever the case may be. Okay, you could, yeah. You could put something in between. There's that. been a run on guns and ammunition, by the there, way. There it's is. huge. Is I, I don't okay. know why. I, I rode by the gun range, and oh my goodness, every parking space was really? sta- Yeah, that's. Uh, there are people. I don't know what that means, and I don't even want to speculate. But well, uh, yeah. maybe they're well, they're trying to. But be creative in some way. I don't know. That would be a way to to discharge um, whatever tensions they have, right? That right. If you I feel so. out of control, you go to whatever that might be, and for right. them, some folks it might be guns, and as long as they maybe more than ten in there too, so as a group. So I'm <laughs> yeah, a little curious have, about that. And they, they, they suddenly, to, have, they yeah. hope they wipe the guns. That, down that, well, they you know they, you know you got eleven people, one of them has to go, and there's a lot of guns around. So <laughs> yes. I, I, yeah, you wouldn't. Sorry, wanna, that's a terrible joke. I'll take that back. Yeah, but if your people are fighting. Fighting over toilet paper, you know that someone might get hurt. Okay, but it's toilet paper. If people fighting over guns, that could go. That could go lots of ways. <laughs> this is, yeah, it could go a lot of ways. That's not, that is no doubt about that. That's not that. But so on this notion of overthinking, this yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's this notion of this thing called um, um, the non-all. Lacan talks oh, about that. Okay. And that it's a way of sort of, um, and it, it and it's uh, it's parallel with some of these uh, notions that the philosopher Hegel talks about, and the idea that that um, inherent in everything is conflict, and okay. that um, you know we often have this um, this concept that uh, everything is in order, everything is fine, everything is a certain way. A, a wonderful example of this that. Um, um, is love, for instance. We often yeah. uh, are convinced that when we fall in love, we go crazy. 
yeah. and that we see something in our loved one that isn't there. We suddenly see the world in a certain way. Well, it's not the way it is. You're, you know, blinded by um, oxytocin and uh, d- uh, dopamine, whatever the case may be. You're sort of flooded with it, and so suddenly your mm-hmm. perspective of the world is shifted. And yep. there's a three month honeymoon period, and then you yep. come back to Earth, and everything's fine. Well, a Hegelian take on that is actually what happens is when one falls in love, you actually see the world as it is. And that the world is full of um, awe, full of things you can't put into words. It is a non-all. It is there is something missing that you can't name, and it is ever-present there. Mm -hmm. And so even though love is a much better state than one might have in a pandemic, it's similar in this as well. We suddenly think the world has shifted and changed, but actually, no, to some degree, it's always this way. There's a certain level of precariousness to the world we live in. Mm-hmm. There's a certain uh, amount of it that we never have control over. There is uh, there is always the possibility of something that could upend it, and it often does. Right. So one way to think this is to find the non-all, to find the reality that seems to have uh, been lifted by this suddenly pan- sudden pandemic, and okay. you know that that's a tough road to walk because you could suddenly find yourself just you know in a constant state of paranoia, and right. before you know it, you've got you know four AK forty sevens and uh, you know a couple of grenades. I don't know if you can buy grenades. <laughs> I, Maybe don't, can, I don't think so. At this point, buy, no, probably, no. Yeah. probably just a good thing. Just about everything else, but yes. probably a good thing. Yeah, I got the launcher. I got. I can't find the <laughs> you grenades. You got the missile launcher. But, uh, oh my goodness! All right, I, we got to check on you about that. But what we're building this mind, you said. So this well, is so an opportunity, maybe, to in think some this, ways. To right? be able to say, you know, and so um, part of the reason I mentioned earlier that there are sort of two ways to respond to this in some way, and both of them in, in, involve some potential way of sort of fleeing. And again, there's nothing wrong with buying a gun if you feel safe or buying a few extra pieces of toilet paper if you feel sealed. No one is hurt in those two things. And right. it would be wrong to pathologize. And I, when I see people sort of, you know, uh, posting pictures of people with all this toilet paper and we all look down on these people, you know, whatever, <laughs> they're doing the best they can. If, and if, if, if that's what they got to do, okay, it's there. There are far worse right. things to right. do than to buy toilet paper. If, as, and the, but we could also offer the possibility that, that uh, if um, – one can begin to think about the world and your 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 place in it in a slightly different way as a result mm-hmm. of what's going on. Yeah, you know, if we want to get existential about it, we could say that suddenly, in the midst of this precariousness, we're aware of the fact that there is a time limit, that there are um, that there's a fragility to all the things around us. Maybe that allows us to invest them in ways that we we haven't before. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. of so many folks I've talked to who. Um, um, their kids are now home because school is closed. Right. And so we're often, we've talked in here before about this tyranny of automaticity and that we can get locked into this sort of groove. And so we go to work, we work, we come home beat, tired, go to sleep and do it over again. Right. That's and there exactly are these right. small brief moments of interactions with the people around us and little bits and sparks. Suddenly that's been upended. So what if... You, you are you no longer can fall back on the rhythm of automaticity, and now it opens up a space to be with your children in ways you couldn't, or with mm-hmm. others in a way that you couldn't, or right. with yourself in a way that you couldn't. Right. You now are sort of forced to slow down, to think and feel, and I know with that comes terror. I've talked with sure. a number of uh, right. of my patients this week about to sort of warn them that staying home for a long time often keeps you from engaging in the activities that have distracted you from some of the things you've been struggling with. Right, okay. Depression may find a way to find you. Some anxiety and fear may find a way to to be there. And so we work on how to be able to, as the Buddhists say, invite it in for tea, to become aware of that this is something that you may have been running from. And maybe this is a chance to take a step back, to turn around and face it in some way, and there could be some growth in that. But... To, to warn people that, you know, if, if, if everything's closed for a couple of weeks, um, my gym is closed. Right. I'm going to have to think about, you know, <clears throat> there is a good chance I'm going to get, if nothing else, squirrely. But I can also imagine and anticipate that it may make me uh, either anxious or a little depressed. Suddenly I don't have an outlet. Right. And so there's a possibility of turning to this and facing it. And this is where maybe the too much thinking. This is not good for everybody. Right. But – it gives you a chance to be able to lean into the things that you feel, even the most uncomfortable ones, fear, anxiety, whatever the case may be. 
and to begin to ask yourself, what is the flavor of this? Where does it come from? What does it mean? Why would this visit me in a moment like this? Right. Why would this be something that I'm afraid of? There's the possibility of beginning to ask yourself and to be able to, if nothing else, fine-tune the narrative you've been living under. Right. Who, uh, where do you come from? Who are you? Where are you going? There's the possibility of being able to ask yourself questions that might move you towards some sort of, uh, there are no answers with a capital A, but might move you toward the possibility of integrating and understanding those in a way that might broaden whatever narrative you're currently living under. Yeah. Well, I, I, I like that idea. The uh, the opportunity is sort of taking this and looking at it in a more hopeful way. But there are a lot of people out there who kind of quickly move to the helplessness uh, side of this, and uh, they're not they're not you know they don't have enough hope. It seems mm-hmm. like in some ways, and I'm wondering how we get hope in these desperate kind of times, and how do we respond to that? But uh, well, uh, maybe it's, it's an individual because, thing. I don't know. You know, you have to be careful. Um, one of the things that Camus said is that uh, in uh, he said that uh, you know the the, the Pandora's box right. or the myth you know so the myth is that this uh, box was open and all the horrible things fear panic all this sort of came out of this box and the last thing to come out was hope and Camus turned that on his head and said well that was the worst thing and Camus thought about what made hope so bad potentially is is that it doesn't allow you to necessarily in turn and face the things that you're dealing with. It may distract you and pull you into the future when you should be in the present with the things you're feeling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a fan of hope, so I'm not, you know. But um, You're not knocking hope. I'm not knocking hope. <laughs> yeah, right. But hope might be something one gets somewhere in that process, but if you move it too early in the process, you miss the possibility for some growth by staying with some things that don't feel so good. Remember we've talked in here right, before that right. our goal is not to, to stop suffering but to get better at it. Mm-hmm. And if we move to a place of hope too quick, then we may lose the possibility of being able to suffer enough to know things we may need to know. Right. Well, it also seems like that, that hope takes a certain amount of courage that people have to have. I gave, um you know that that seems to be an underlying issue too is the the courage to live life. I think Adler was talking about that. So uh, and also an apostate, some, by the way. I heard it. I heard it. I'm not going to argue that point. That's for another show down the road. We'll get we'll get the boxing gloves on and see Adler versus Freud at some point. But hey, um, wisdom uh, combined with some courage, so that you can act, can have hope in some way. So there's well, this. Uh, I, I think though that idea that. Needs to what Camus respond, might say was that need to sometimes to. hope can be an enemy of wisdom. Right. And that, um, uh, you know, and I was thinking of an example when you were speaking, like if, if you uh, have an upcoming calculus test. Right. And you say, well, you know, I hope I can get this. I, I have, you know, I got, I'm, I, I know... I know I can make good I grades. Feel, I feel good about this. But if one uh, hadn't studied. But if you haven't studied, <laughs> then you're. Then, you know, it's possible, I guess. Possible. But, yeah. but the role of hope would be that where wisdom and hope might be, be able to do a dance is, is to be able to. Uh, and, and what would happen, I work with a lot of students, and so people don't realize this, but procrastination is an anxiety disorder. Okay. Because what, what people, is that what I have? Yeah. It's <laughs> about time we, I heard from well, you about get, that. Okay, even the even folks who indulge in the most egregious procrastination. There are things they don't procrastinate on. Like, you know, if they got a new video game, they're not like, oh, man, I want to play this, but I keep putting it off. No, they play the game. No, they play. That's <laughs> but, right. I like it. But, you know, if it's, if it's paying your taxes, whatever the case may be, you're going to procrastinate. The um, <laughs> So what would happen is is if the uh, – if, if uh, as the it, date approaches for the calculus test, the procrastinator waits, you know, like 12 hours before the test to try to cram it all in it. with this sort of, and then shows up, you know, whatever the case may be. The goal would be is how do you suffer your anxiety enough to you begin the process of suffering early? Because mm, yeah. uh, most of us would not enjoy studying for a calculus test. No. It involves a dance with anxiety, a dance with a feeling of ignorance, all the things that are necessary for some sort of true learning process to, for us to undergo. So we have to be able to to stay in this space of suffering so we can lean into it and do the things that we need to do. And that in of itself generates the potential wisdom. And then hope has the next step is to be, once you've done that, to feel the confidence and hope 
for what is about to transpire. Right. But it, if um, confidence, hope without suffering might um, might just get you in trouble. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, give me an idea. I'm going to work on a uh, calculus video game. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, maybe a combination of that. Something might happen. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, yeah. Here, well, I know. Uh, I always try to get my uh, my son to because uh, he likes computer games and whatnot. I always wanted to play TurboTax. <laughs> I said, if he could really get good at this TurboTax, <laughs> I maybe. see where you're going with that. Is maybe he can help you get that tax one. By the way, which has been now postponed to July. So really, yeah, your tax returns are not due April fifteenth now, which, July. Which means they'll be due, turned in in July. <laughs> That's right. We won't have to think about that. It makes the point we we're just talking about. There That's, you go. <laughs> you know, or I'll, or maybe I'll try to. I'll try to. Um, uh, make use of current confusion and not pay them for a while. Okay, <laughs> I yeah. Mean, it worked it's, for Willie Nelson. The, the, it's a, <laughs> it's a, uh, you can't. I don't. I don't think you're going to be able to use the COVID nineteen as an excuse for a lot of your <laughs> shortcomings. Eight years here from somehow. now, they're like, you haven't paid taxes. Well, it's the pandemic, <laughs> sir. The pandemic. The pandemic is <laughs> over. Been over for a couple of years now. <laughs> okay. You got. To, uh, but. I, 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 I think that the bottom line for this is maybe one of the ways, be it war or a pandemic, it takes us back to what we do with our suffering, um, both individually and and uh, with all of us. What do we do with the, sur- the feelings of unease, the tension, the stressors? And that is something in, in, in mental health that we often have to, um, both ourselves and the folks who we work with, how do we find a way to do something that can grow us right. how do we do something that we can think and feel with the things that are happening to us and right. people don't realize this but there's a difference between a, an experience and a feeling there's a difference between so, because um we go back to that notion of automaticity often the things that we are experiencing we don't actually um they don't become feelings in the truest sense. They don't become something that we can name, that we can do something with. They usually just trigger that automatic response. And so much of the work that we do is at least initially opening the possibility of, of something in between this this nascent experience and then the action that occurs, something that's there in the middle. And that's kind of what therapy does. Someone steps into an office and they tell you a story often about what happened the week before or the day before or that day. And as they speak it, they're slowly but surely you've created a space where they can start to put that into words. And sometimes your goal and your role, right, is to to be able to, as you help them put that into words, to be able to make connections with it. Mm -hmm. They are dancing with their suffering and you're helping them. And then at some point at the end of this, they might be able to have not only named, which is sometimes enough to be Mm -hmm. able to name and contain, but mm-hmm. to also potentially do something with it. All right. Yeah, to kind of move move with it and take that action. Well, it's, it's interesting that um, you, you mentioned a, a moment ago about your gym closing. You really like exercise. It's one of your outlets in there. I don't but, necessarily like it, but I have to Okay, do it. I'll, yeah, I'll, uh, yeah. Try, yeah. I, we could argue that point. But uh, maybe you like it afterwards. Um, okay, yeah. but the point being that the, – I like the, the fact that you know <laughs> chicks dig me. That's the only part. Wait, what? what? That, that is not – we have to have another talk about that. Well, I was thinking about the usual routines are taken away from you, right? Mm-hmm. You, uh, We like to go to movies, for example. We do. All the movie theaters are closed. I, I like a movie that once I've uh, gone to, I come out of it and think, you know what? Things are bad, but that was a lot that, worse. <laughs> that was the worst thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I can see how that, that – matter of fact, you've taken me to a number of – we've met and saw these movies I'm still concerned about. But um, So that might be a good thing. But, yeah, the going to movies, the exercise at the gym, the regular routines, and now that's not there for you. Mm-hmm. And like many other people now, we have to figure out something different to de-stress or to – as part of our routine Mm -hmm. so how do we manage that what do we Mm -hmm. need to do well uh, i've considered hate crimes (laughs) (laughs) okay not 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 a good piece of advice no No, it's probably just hold hold back on that let's hold back on the hate crime it's (laughs) not uh not a good thing never really uh 
Yes, but, but you but you you're open to it, and if you haven't thought about what you would do, or you don't have a project in mind, like hey, let's go do plant some flowers, let's go do some other kinds of things, you don't have that ready. You're kind of stuck. And uh, well, 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 what about what? What if one of the things you could do is is not necessarily I mean, projects are wonderful. Being able to do things, we're about to uh, paint a bedroom and and yeah, uh, and all that sort of. We're doing some work around the house, but. What if, what if instead of a project or an action, you simply sat still for a while? Oh, okay. what happened if if you if you instead of going to the gym you you go out in your back porch or um, you uh, you're sit. not going to tell us in, uh, to start reading books, are you? Well, you know, here's the thing. I mean, I think I mean, a, a book yes, would be a wonderful thing. You should tell us that, by the way. But even there is an act of action. And what if before we do any of these things, we allow ourselves some just quiet to be in a space with just ourselves? Okay. You know, one All of the right. things that we've noticed that um, the benefit of uh, of of our current culture is is many the technology, the way in which that the, the speed at which things move, it's it's all wonderful. But what we may not be getting are those moments of quiet, those moments of just being, those moments of just, you know, I was, um, I went outside um, uh, this morning and I sat in my hammock and watched the sun come up. Okay. You know? And uh, it was enough to sort of look at the colors in the clouds, to sort of think about the the the, the patterns around me. There was the as the birds begin to birds are very loud, by the way. You just they're, they're, all the birds. Um, Listen, there was there was a moment there when we didn't have the birds, and I'm glad the birds are back. By the way, I just want to say that they they they're certainly they're back where I'm from, or where in my house, my backyard. <laughs> and um, those sorts of moments, there there may be. The moments of rest that we might be able to afford ourselves in times like this might be really important. Okay. So projects are wonderful. And then if 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 you're thinking about a project that one might do, you know, if sure. somebody was posting a meme, um, um, and they were talking about, uh, you know, seven o'clock eat breakfast, uh, seven forty-five <laughs> second breakfast, um, nine fifteen. Uh, you know, piece of chocolate, and they were sort of—it was a joke, but they were showing out. And it's interesting because, you know, when I look at that from the point of view of someone in the mental health field, I can see how they are—they are mediating, they are regulating an affect state through food, right? Sure, a lot and, of people do. You know, we've talked here before the difference between regulation and modulation. Nothing wrong with regulation, but you know. Um, Drinking Colt 45 all day is also an act of regulation. Yes. It's, you know. Not so good for you. But. Well, it's good for the manufacturer of the Colt 45. <laughs> right. If you've right. got stock in that, that's probably the one that's not yeah, going to be affected by Yeah, no, I don't know if I have any of that stock. <laughs> in fact, sure, but. 80% of my retirement is in Colt 45, but not stock. I just have Colt 45. <laughs> just the Colt 45. <laughs> just the Colt 45. But, uh, oh, my goodness. But, I never know what you've got at your house. I'm going to have to come over and see what's up. Uh, yeah, they have a basement full of Colt 45. <laughs> basement full. But, um, um, there is the possibility of slowing thing down, th- things down enough that as opposed to an act of regulation, what if you were to move a little toward that modulatory a- and that would require some reflection, some naming of the things that you feel, giving yourself the possibility of a multiple number of things that you could do, right? right? right. So instead of being narrowed into a reflexive regulatory act, you might suddenly open a multiple choice and it's 7.30 after breakfast you could say, wait a minute, you know, I f- normally would look forward to a day off, but somehow this feels scary and weird, and I need something to do. You've already began the process of modulation. Okay. Well, what is it that I might be able to do? Right. The possibility of project, the possibility of being able to say, you know, even though we're supposed to social distance, my friends are also at home, maybe uh, I we could play Skype Battleship. You know? Okay. All right. There you, you could, go. Uh, yeah. There are things that you suddenly could do that you wouldn't necessarily have thought of prior to or before. Boom. You move from a space of simple regulatory reflex to something else. And that may be what uh, we could practice in moments like this. I think that I think that we probably should uh, do that. You know, sometimes these big events and these horrific situations we find ourselves in, there's always the people who step up. They help others. They come together. Not me. 
maybe not you in this case. <laughs> that is not right. You know, <laughs> come on. All right. So, but yeah, they they take a soccer field and they start building a temporary hospital and shelter. Uh, yeah. they, they we've heard that on the news. They, people are beginning to do some great and wonderful things that that help other people. Mm-hmm. And this is a global time, and so. Mm-hmm. I'm going to use the word hope again, but I, I'm I'm hopeful that people mm. will step up and find those ways. And so, in that meditation, in that moment of, you know, sort of reflection, that they're they're able to think about how can I not only get through this myself, but how can I help maybe reach out in some other ways and mm. do something good for the general population. Investment in others would be a wonderful thing, right? There, there's sure. something beautiful in the possibility of being able. And, there may be a number of ways to do that, too. Um, if you have um, some of the elder, elderly folk around you have probably uh, are probably the most afraid. Sure. Possibility of simply calling them. Say, hey, just checking in. Yeah. Uh, the possibility of, um, um, I'm trying to think of anything that you could do that wouldn't necessarily make them um, vulnerable to the virus because you right. could be bringing it. They're, they're, probably a phone call would be a wonderful thing. Right? Yeah, I think right? that's, that's good. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe dropping off something that they might need if you, if you don't want to have contact. You're afraid mm-hmm. of that. So, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is really hard because I think prior to this when we went through difficult times that people came together, the groups of people came together, and they're telling us now, don't be in the group. Yeah, yeah right? not, uh, so. I think it's, uh, it's ten or more people now, but in some places it's like five Five. Sure. I haven't heard five. Yeah, I've, I've heard, heard ten. It's, okay. It's like okay. five. So um, it, yeah. it's somewhere. So it's if you've be got like, a family member, you've got six people in your family. Somebody has to. At go, some right? points, it's going to be like only like a point eight three, and only like you know amputees are allowed to like you know do anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but s- staying in place. What it, I mean, there's there's a part of it that this is this physical thing that you you're not going out, but I I still see a lot of cars on the on the road. Not as many. Not Certainly downtown, it's uh, not I, very few. We were here. I, I pulled it. There was a. I had a wonderful place to park for the first. That's time right. Ever. Front door. You were parked in front of the Literally, door. Literally, you know. <laughs> that's great. I had to step over a lot of dead people, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding? It's not. No, it's not, not, not the not dead true. people yet. Uh, no dead people. I mean, uh, no. <laughs> All right. So, in in your advice, I mean, I, I think people are looking for some advice right now. Counselors uh, are good folks to turn to maybe they can mm-hmm. help you work through some things uh, but uh, so you mentioned earlier that your wife who has a practice as well and she's doing telemental health she's yeah. doing it over the she internet is, so she's, uh, there have been a few bugs in that but she's found a way to be able to to talk to her folk and at some point i'll probably at least do a little of that or i may have to move all of mine we've taken precautions in my private practice on um, on what to do and at the center at this college where we have moved to complete t- telemental health so, you know, there, there's still ways to be able to make that happen. And even if you're trapped at home, you can still talk to a therapist. That's that's very doable. Yeah, I think um, it, and it's interesting that technology is kind of helping us out here a little bit. Um, so, yeah, not everybody's ready for that telemental health. Like we were promised here in the state of Georgia, everybody, everybody was going to do that. But you, you, you can have your nice setup with the microphone and mm-hmm. the camera, but the person – on the other end, your client uh, may not have that capability, mm-hmm. and it gets a little sketchy. So we're going to have to work out the bugs right have, about yeah. that, right? And my wife, uh, unfortunately, she, uh, she's she been doing her sessions in our meat locker, and I think that's really disconcerting that some folks. <laughs> that is not you know? true. First of all, you, as a vegan, do not <laughs> have right, a meat locker, so meat that's locker. wrong not... altogether. But, uh, yeah, you can only buy so much uh, canned meats now. I found that out the other <laughs> you day. Did you had the, yeah, yeah. Tuna, and as, as two I was, cans of tuna was it, right? As I was saying, one of the things that I noticed that the, in a pandemic that that my section is the one that's still untouched. <laughs> I can walk in and have a full uh, yeah, oh, full yeah. meat selection. That buy as much as you want to. There you go. No I, one's uh, stopping you. All I right, am Dave. fine. All I'm right, not, that's uh, good. Well, lesson in that for the rest of us. Maybe we mm-hmm. need to think a little bit more about what we're doing. After all, this thing began somewhere in China with either a bat or a pangolin or something that happened. Or maybe, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. what they said. Now, there are other, you know, conspiracy theories about a lab that leaked something out. I'm still going to, like, gonna go down that road. blame one of Trump's kids. I think that's probably... Oh, here we go. Too late. This, we already blame them. All right. It's got to be something. With the telemental health thing, I think that, yeah. you know, um, 
uh, I think that's maybe an important thing to stress, that if you are home and isolating, you still have an option of being able to connect with a mental health worker. Right. Uh, there are – there there uh, um, most of my colleagues have been, able, have been making that transition. You can still – there and they've um, – a number of insurance companies have been uh, a, uh, have uh, uh, lifted um, uh, restrictions along those lines mm-hmm. so that people can get the help they need. There's talk of being able to deal with some of the uh, practicing across state line stuff. That that's still in the mix. We're still right. trying to work that right. out. But yeah. you know, there you now have that as an option where you may not have had it before. Right. And as opposed to just simply feeling you have to do without, you don't. You can you can find uh, sure. someone that if you don't already have a therapist, you can find someone in the uh, in the community. This would be a good time to to keep that contact going. Well, I'm kind of I'm kind of curious about it because if you're already a patient or a client and you you have a therapist and you're working with them that that sounds reasonable that you move to telemental health you can do it on your phone there are lots of different uh, platforms out there to, to to do those kind of things but what about the new patient somebody who's just dealing with this and needs to reach out for the first time to a therapist ah, that's going to be a little we, different we uh, have intake a, processes as well they. actually you know there are a number of folks that have been doing uh, online intakes for a while there are ways we um, there are programs that allow you to be able to receive and sign documents that you need to to be able to start that process right there are literally ways to do that you can still find someone um, we have a way in my practice if someone is new we can we can give them the stuff they need so they're aware of what uh, all the papers to sign all that sort of stuff and we can begin the process it, it right. happens it's not right a- and you know I, I i've noticed too that a lot of people have put uh on their websites there's a there's a notice about how we're changing our practice or uh that that goes throughout now you're being contacted by all of the companies not mental health the companies in particular but our groups but all the uh, businesses that you've ever done any business with is mm. sending you a notice about COVID nineteen. Yeah. I'm not sure mm. why I need to know that from mm. some of those companies that are out there, but they're trying of, to do something. Yeah. Uh, a couple to, of uh, in companies that I'm sort of embarrassed that I did a lot of uh, yes. work with is suddenly you know like uh, you know <laughs> the inflatable uh, <laughs> doll uh, yeah, the, uh, company uh, that kind of thing. I'm making those it up. A couple of inflatable sheep I bought suddenly. <laughs> oh. <I'm> like, <laughs> Being oh, contacted by you know, or, is, or I, mean, uh, I didn't really didn't need to hear that. Um, okay, inflatable sheep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but yeah, so everybody's trying to step up a little bit. You know, either companies are trying to do the business now. There, there are ideas about the prop, the bottom line, and the profit, of course, and uh, to try to put out that. Uh, that, that concept and that appearance, mm-hmm. but uh, I think everybody's in the same lifeboat. You right mentioned now. that thing, and I noticed. I don't, I don't know if you've talked to Hackett late, lately, but I know he was attempting to be able to maybe make a little money off this by by making his own. Uh, he's making hand sanitizer at home. Hackett, and, yeah, it's, it's making like, his hand sanitizer at home. He's making his own we brand. To, we need to contact and, and him I, and know, see what's. I keep that. Some of the things he's putting in there, I'm not sure really all that helpful. Oh, you know? really? You know, like uh, you know, yeah. I don't think potatoes are what? a main, uh, are main, uh, or in any way, uh, you know. Potatoes but hey, in the yeah. hand sanitizer. Actually, it's vodka. What I think he's doing. Oh yeah, well, now that, that would make more sense if he did that. It has some alcohol content, but it does, we're yeah. gonna have to contact him about if he's making hand, home hand sanitizer. I think he just mixes Something's vodka not... and skittles. He just sort of mix them together and then puts that in a. There you go. You're, uh, you're well, safe. yeah. Well, that gets back to the. Uh, um, uh, fraud a little bit because you know there are, there is this stuff out there. There's the miracle water that people are selling, and uh, I think our, uh, some of those uh, folks out there like Jim Baker and all are sent, they've gotten shut down. I understand. I hope so. Yeah, Alex case, Jones. I don't know if you're. Oh yeah, Alex Jones. That guy, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> big fan. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy. Yeah. He's, he's got something that'll kill the coronavirus. Uh, not. Not exactly. By the way, uh, you can go to the CDC website and look up, uh, you know, what, what does kill those kinds of germs. They have, a, I think it's about 11 or 12 pages of products that will, will do it, and they have a category that kills the novo virus, virus but mm-hmm. not the coronavirus, and they have things like Lysol and some of the other mm-hmm. stuff and particular kinds of that mm-hmm. that are listed to 
actually mm-hmm. kill those germs. So that's good news. And but you need to get good information, and mm-hmm. I think that's a big problem because I think we, as we were just talking about, the miracle cures are coming out, mm-hmm. which are fraudulent. But we need to get good information during this time. Yeah, there was a, an, a, 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 I think it was our good friend Geraldo Rivera was uh, doing a net segment on Fox News where he was talking about how um, if you could uh, hold your breath for 10 seconds that you were. Oh, yeah. You, you saw that? I think I saw that, right. Is, 10 again, you know, seconds is not the uh, test of anything, really, is not, it? You know, <laughs> oh, oh, and if you don't cough after holding yeah, your breath a, for 10 seconds. That was, that, was that the other thing? Yeah, that, just, that was the other part of it's it. It's just so. not. Uh, but yeah. if you start coughing immediately, you, you've you you've had it. So yeah, you've had it. Uh, I am okay. not sure what. But, but let's not pay. Well, let's make some good. Let's use good decision making. Make a good judgment about whether this information is helpful or not. Because I think you. That's another risk that people follow poor information and get themselves into t- some sort of trouble. People do take advantage of these kinds of situations and uh, not helpful to us in a general sense. Well, and that takes us back to this notion of, of how to develop a mind for this, that w- we can often, as opposed to uh, um, buying mil- mir- miracle water is a regulatory act. <laughs> it is It is literally a way of, in the act of buying it, you, you have done something with, the, with, uh, with okay. what you're experiencing yeah without really necessarily taking the time to open that space for thought that we've talked about. Right. It, it is, um, and it would make sense that, uh, we've talked in here before, that s- some folks have a better ability to be able to think and feel at the same time than others do. Mm-hmm. Some folks are easily overwhelmed. Some folks, because of their developmental history, pre-existing conditions, folks who struggle with, over- with who, are, who have uh, trauma histories, these things can all trigger, and then you could find yourself acting in ways that don't necessarily help you, and in some cases might even be harmful. If you bought a bunch of miracle water and thought that you were then uh, in, invulnerable, and you you could Dude, be doing, <laughs> you, you know, yeah, that, that that's not necessarily a good thing. But it takes us back to how do we grow a mind to think this? How do we live in this moment in this time of suffering in such a way that we don't? That we uh, that we don't wallow in the things that we feel. There's nothing beneficial in that, but suffer just enough to be able to give it a name, and then to be able to do something with it, to answer it in a way that's healthy for our, us and for the people around us. Well, uh, I hope I hope so. And, and, and this idea of working through the getting moving through this pandemic and coming out on the other side, like you said at the very beginning, has a, a beginning, a midpoint, and an end. And and at some point, maybe there's some lessons learned, and it teaches us about ourselves and mm-hmm. what uh, you know what we need to do to grow our mind, but uh, survive these kinds of things. This may not be the last one. Uh, it uh, probably not. Uh, I suspect that we will learn something from this. We um, there there will be, you know, if now we're in the middle, we're not at the end, and there will be a price to pay at the end. There there are going to be some economic fallout. I think all of us to some degree are going to be oh, affected yeah. by this economically. Definitely so. Yeah. And um, we'll have to find a way to navigate that. Some of the folks who work in um, you know uh, the entertainment industry, some of the folks who work in uh, just about anything. Yeah, uh, these days. Yeah. Suddenly, they they may no longer have an income for a month. They may. So there have already been a number of folks who've lost their jobs as a result of this. Right. We're going to have to find. Um, you know, we're going to do something. Uh, there are folks who. You know, um, I was a friend of mine was talking about how their uh, daughter was really upset because she doesn't get to participate in graduation from her high school. Oh, right. That's right. Yeah. So you know, yeah. things have stopped. In, in lots of ways and may not start up for a while. And so there's a, all of us to some degree are, are, are going to experience something negative from this. And we'll, there, we may, when we get to the other side of this, open up a space for grief, for disappointment. Um, and there is, even those things have to be suffered at least somewhat so we can do something with them. Um, that hasn't erupted. We haven't. We're not there yet. No. But we'll. We will be. I think the uncertainty too is a is an issue because we get 
uh, some predictions um, and you, you really don't know where this information becomes because it's probability and people were you know, speculating to a certain extent about the year-long kind of process or how long it's going to take the economy to bounce back or how long it takes to get over the COVID-19. I mean, I've heard reports that uh, some people have gone seven days, some people have gone two weeks with it, and then came out the other side. There was a guy that said uh, that for three days there was 104 temperature. It was horrible. And mm. then he began to get better. Mm. And so his idea was just over seven, eight days. Mm. But So you've got all this information and how to process it and put it into what you need to do and what action you need to take and what, what you need to do to grow your mind. I, uh, that information – uh, although it's helpful, sometimes uh, we've got to do something with that information. Mm-hmm. And there's a there's a process of being able to, you know, we usually on some level feel something, which then moves us to the pos- to, to the point of trying to to, to to gather information. And then once once we've done that, we have to be able to then do something with the information that we've gathered. So when you say, well, with some folks it's seven days, three days, fourteen days, you know. That is information that we then have to be able to do something with. And what I hear in that is if, if I allowed my anxiety to, 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 to overwhelm me, that I might mm-hmm. suddenly feel a certain sense of panic. I might mm-hmm. move to a place, well, that's never going to be me. I'm, that's not going to happen to me. Or, right. oh, no, what do I do? But the possibility is, okay, so I need to be able to think about that this could impact me in a way that could put me out of commission for a while. There could be a good a good deal of suffering I might have to go through to make through make with to to move through this. There's the possibility that if that if I can be open to that, then I can prepare. I can do something with it, right? Yeah. And there's something about cultivating that process, the mind that we have to grow to be able to do this. Right? Yeah. Well, I think this has been helpful today, and and I like the idea that uh, we're in this together, and we've got to work on ourselves at the same time. And and it's not only the, the individual, but it's the it's a global issue, uh, more so than ever before. And maybe that'll help us in some ways to sort of bring some countries together. We're going to talk on a little scale that people need to cooperate with each other. There's a, there is this tendency to blame, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, that comes yeah. out even. From our president, as a matter of fact, the Chinese virus. You know, I'm not sure how helpful it is to not helpful. Uh, <laughs> uh, to, but people need someone to blame, isn't that the sort of an, uh, uh, the reaction and that, that people have? It's you know, so and if if we um, there's a place for thought in that too. There's a way to be able to say, well, why do we need someone to blame? Is it helpful to 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 point to this as uh, quote the Chinese virus? Because part of, I mean, even if you, the, just from a completely pragmatic way of thinking about it, the next the next pandemic may not be coming from China. So if your goal is to suddenly blame right, the Chinese, yeah. <laughs> there you know there Oops. are there's a, a, a huge other part of the globe that you're not really thinking about. And you're suddenly that, have, that's have what, you been to the southeast of America? I mean, that's where we're at. That we live there, so there's all kind of things that could happen from here. By the way, and, and that's both the beauty and tragedy of racism. It's beautiful in the sense that it offers you a remarkable uh, and convenient answer to anything. Yeah. But the tragedy is it doesn't help at all. It doesn't. <laughs> Let's see it. We haven't learned that lesson very well not for really, some reason. Yeah. Point the finger. There's four fingers pointing back. Kind of it's not nation. yet. It's not. So, uh, yeah, that that's a, that's that's uh, yeah. This is a time that some people are just going to have a hard time to to uh, to respond. I mean, the question of uh, what would you say to people? Uh, I think the president got this question uh, just yesterday. A reporter that he really called out said you're a terrible reporter for asking this you know what what should people do what would you say to help comfort people Mm -hmm. and he said you know that was my paraphrasing of it but uh (laughs) he said that you were that that, that That was you're a terrible reporter (laughs) for asking that question yeah that was on the news look that one up all right so uh, (laughs) really yeah (laughs) there's uh there's there's all kinds of things that are happening at this point in time but uh yeah so uh, final words here about this. I mean, you're talking about growing the mind. You're talking about really kind of 
taking time. Mm -hmm. uh, that was almost uh, you didn't say the word meditation. I might have used it, but the uh, self reflection and the quiet space for yourself. And uh, and uh, you you're going to have to react to these things, and you're going to have to figure out what you're going to do day to day because the normal activities are suddenly not available to and you. And if you think about the, the those old maps, whenever they ran out where they they didn't, they would just put there be dragons. In a way, <laughs> we're all in there be dragon space. And a part of the reason why you'd put on a map there be dragons is because it kept people from venturing off and getting lost. Right. right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're in a new space. We're off the map. But there, it's not dragons. I mean, there are always dragons. There always were. That whatever the thing about those maps is, I'm sure there are some bad things here. But there's also some, some bad things on the part that you got mapped out. And it may be that there, you know, okay, different bad things here. But there's always bad things. I think that right now. This is a time for for potential that we need to self care. It's a time for us to be. We're being forced to slow down. At least many of us. And there's even a danger in slowing down because there are things that we've been running from that may catch us. That's also okay too. I think that your ability to self care to connect with others was very important. I think. Uh, I also think that you know I'm, I make a lot of jokes. What else can I do? Yeah. But I also think that this is a good time to to also to find humor. Um, I tell a lot of folks that I work with that um, you know if if uh, if you can have a laugh or two, if nothing else, it generates. There's something about humor that generates an instant perspective. Yeah. And you know um, watch uh, watch some episodes of the Andy Griffith Show. I don't know. Maybe right. uh, you know. There's uh, a lot of content out there to watch. I'm I'm uh, I'm thinking the you know you you started out earlier today talking about uh, you know Netflix and chill uh, as a a response to this this situation. Nothing and, wrong uh, with uh, there's some content out there to watch. Maybe it's uh, time for read a book or do some other things. But yeah, you can kind of occupy yourself with that. Netflix and chill, and and maybe uh, you know we'll we'll. We'll continue to think this together. We'll continue to, to move through this as with our with our families, with our friends, with our community, and you said too, as as globally as well. Mm -hmm. We will move through this together. Yeah, I like it, my friend. All right, that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching. Got therapy. <laughs>